If you've never been to the snow before, I'm going to teach you some tips and tricks about how to be a beginner skier or snowboarder at Perisher. Skiing and snowboarding are so much fun. My family absolutely love it. And a great place to start learning is Perisher Valley. Perisher has a lot to offer beginners with large hire shops, all kinds of different beginner ski and snowboarding lessons and many, many beginner trails all over the mountains. It's really a great place to start. Now we're going to talk a little bit about what you actually need to get started skiing at Perisher. Let's start with the essentials and these are lift tickets and skiing or snowboarding lessons. These are the standard Perisher lift tickets. You order them online at the Perisher website and you can reload them each year as well. You can have your passes mailed out to you or you can pick them up from the customer service desks at the Ski Tube Bullocks Flat Station or the Perisher Centre. And I'll show you those a little bit later. Ski lift tickets are going to be one of your most expensive purchases when it comes to skiing, as well as ski or snowboarding lessons. Ski lift tickets can cost you anywhere from $100 to almost $200, averaging at around about $140 for a day ticket. Pause here to see the walk-in lift ticket prices for 2021. Buying consecutive days does reduce the price, as does the time of year that you buy them for. Pause here to see the walk-in prices for 2021 for lessons for adults and children. And note that these prices are in addition to your lift tickets. If you do know the dates you're going down, I strongly recommend that you book things like skiing lessons and night skiing sessions as early as possible to avoid disappointment, as they do book up, particularly if numbers are limited. These look a little bit different. They're Perisher Epic Passes. These ones can cover you for the whole snow season and they can save you quite a bit of money, but really you need to be skiing for around about a week first before they start paying for themselves. You do need to order Epic Passes several months in advance and the sooner you buy them, the cheaper they are. Before you pay for anything, the best thing to do is to go onto the Perisher website and see if you can combine things to save some money. You can often get lift tickets combined with lessons and even ski hire as well. You can also bundle in your ski tube tickets. I'm going to pop any important websites and chapter links into the video description so that you can find them easily. Something else to consider that might affect the price of things is what time during the ski season that you want to visit. The Australian snow season runs from June through until October and the most expensive time for lift tickets and lessons is in the centre of that time, which is July and August. But as a beginner, you don't necessarily need to go in the peak season. I'd recommend starting off in June or July and then if you really like skiing, then you've got the rest of the season to go again and again. The next thing you're going to need to consider is your actual snow gear for going to the snow. The good news is you don't have to outlay a whole lot of money at first. You can hire things like skis, ski boots and poles, snowboards and snowboard boots. It helps to keep the costs down, especially when you're first starting or if you've got kids that are growing through gear like crazy. It's also strongly recommended that you hire a helmet. They are compulsory in children's lessons. Almost everyone wears them nowadays. It's a great safety decision. <music> 
hiring waterproof clothing is a must, especially when you're a beginner because you do tend to fall down quite a bit and you don't want to be cold and wet. It'll spoil the fun. You'll also need to hire or buy some gloves. Usually around about $25 will get you a decent pair of gloves that will keep your hands warm and dry for the whole time that you're there. Here's a little tip for you. See that black piece of material across the thumb of my glove? That's actually a goggle wiper. You just swipe it across and it wipes off all the snow and ice. Also on your hiring list or buying list are snow goggles. These are going to help cut out the sun's glare on a sunny day or if it's snowing or blizzarding, they really help you to be able to see in those conditions as well. Another little add-on that is really great to include is a neck warmer. It's only a little piece of cloth, but it can make such a difference, especially if it's really cold and snowy. When you're on a ski lift and there's a cold wind blowing, it's so icy. So you just pop your neck warmer up over your nose and mouth and it makes a real difference. You can get thin and thick versions and also balaclavas and we tend to swap them around depending on the weather. They average at about $20 and you can get them at any ski store. Don't forget to pack some reasonable length, fairly thick socks because sometimes higher boots can be a little bit uncomfortable and hard. And also it helps to pack a beanie just for those times when you're not skiing. I always take some sunblock and also some lip balm up with me when I go skiing. It's so easy to get sunburned because of all the reflection off the white snow and chapped lips are really common up there too. Now this one isn't a necessity, but it's a pretty nifty little item. It attaches to your phone or sunglasses or whatever. So when you're on ski lifts, you can't drop them and lose them. You can get these from any ski store. These are snow boots. You may or may not need these. If you're only going down for the day, I wouldn't really recommend it. You're going to be out of your normal street shoes and into your ski boots. And then when you're finished, you just pop back into your street shoes. But if you're going to go and play in the snow with the kids, or if you're intending on staying for longer than one day, then it's probably a good idea to hire or buy some. Otherwise, you're going to end up with some very wet and cold feet. Perisher Valley is a two and a half hour drive from Canberra down the Monero Highway. From Cooma, it's an hour and 10 minutes. I definitely wouldn't recommend driving this road in the dark hours because there's a lot of wildlife, particularly very early in the morning. If you haven't managed to pre-arrange hiring your ski gear before your trip, don't worry. There are lots and lots of hire shops on the way down to Perisher in the towns of Cooma, Berrydale and Jindabyne. Many of them are 24 hours like this large one here, Rhythm Sports in Cooma. Of course, you may have already pre-arranged to hire your gear at Perisher, or you can just roll up and hire it there. And there are some advantages to this. Although it costs more to hire at Perisher, if something breaks or something doesn't fit right, you can get it replaced then and there. And also it means that you're not lugging gear backwards and forwards to your car, which can be a bit of a hassle, especially if you've got kids and you have to carry their gear as well. If you're traveling from a distance away, it's definitely a good idea to try and stay overnight somewhere, particularly as skiing is really exhausting, especially when you're learning. There's a huge range of accommodation available at the Snowy Mountains, from basic camping right through to luxury accommodation. Our parish sponsors are the Matterhorn Lodge and we love to stay there every year. It's just a fantastic on snow experience. And when you get up in the morning, you can just step outside and ski straight down to the ski lifts. We can't recommend the Matterhorn highly enough. If you plan on driving to Perisher, instead of catching the ski tube, then you're going to need to hire some snow chains if you don't own a four wheel drive. 
because it's a legal requirement of driving in the national park to carry snow chains with you during the snow season. You can hire them along the way, they usually cost around about $20 or $30 for the day. And if it snows, you've got to put those snow chains on and drive in the snow. So if that worries you at all, then it's probably better to take the ski tube. To drive to Perisher, once you've gone through Jindabyne, you head straight up Kosciuszko Road and follow it along. You'll eventually get to the entrance gates to the National Park, where you'll need to buy a day pass into the park. Don't forget, hire your snow chains before you enter. Park in the Perisher car park and walk across this bridge to get to the Perisher Centre and the ski slopes. There is no overnight parking in the Perisher car park and if you're staying at Perisher, only a few lodges offer a few car parks, so most likely you'll need to catch the ski tube. If you're heading to Perisher via the ski tube, once you pass Jindabyne, turn left into the Alpine Way. After about 15 minutes, you'll see the turn to the ski tube on your right hand side. If you're just heading up to Perisher for the day, park in the day car park. And if you're going to Perisher to stay over, then head up to the long stay car park. You are allowed to stop at the curbside and drop your passengers and gear off first before you go and park your car. That often works out easiest because it means that you don't have to carry things from the car to the terminal. If you're staying overnight, it makes a lot of sense to hire a cart because you can pack it up with your suitcases and ski gear and you can take it on and off the ski tube. Inside the ski tube terminal, there's lots of different services, but the main one that you're probably going to want is where you can pick up your tickets if you don't already have them. There's also a ski hire centre there and a few different little shops like coffee shops and some public toilets too. For a really detailed look at the ski tube, be sure to watch our beginner's guide to the ski tube YouTube. The ride on the ski tube is a quick and easy one. In only around 10 minutes, you'll find yourself arriving in Perisher Valley. A lot of skiers stay on board and go to the next stop, which is the Blue Cow Terminal, mainly because you can just step outside of the doors and start skiing straight down the mountain. The Perisher Ski Tube Terminal is actually quite a large shopping centre. There's all kinds of services here from ATMs to a post office, a supermarket, cafes, you name it, it's there. If you're staying at one of the lodges in Perisher, you'll probably need to head down to the Oversnow counter. There you can arrange to take a ride in an Oversnow vehicle to your accommodation. If you're visiting Perisher for the day, head over this snow bridge to the Perisher Centre. The Perisher Centre has a lot of services that you're probably going to need. Guest Services is able to issue you with your ski lift tickets and also help arrange ski lessons if you haven't already done so online. Or you can just use this machine to issue your lift ticket without even going into guest services. It's a great way to avoid long lines. You'll find the Snow Sports Hire Centre next door to guest services. This is a really large centre. It's sort of like a conveyor belt system where you go from one station to the next to the next to get each piece that you need. This makes it a really good system for beginners because you get a lot of support on what you need and what you don't. All you need to start is to fill in the yellow hire form and take your measurements such as height, weight 
and shoe size. Then you head off to the skiwear counter and the cashiers first. Pause here now to see the walk-in prices for 2021 to hire skis, boots and poles. If you're hiring waterproof clothing, you can try it on in these change rooms. And don't forget to keep some layers on underneath to keep nice and warm outside. Next, you'll head to the boots counter where you'll get the right size boots. You sit on these benches and try them on. Don't worry, they're going to feel super weird first off. Very heavy, but you'll get used to them really quickly. Snowboard boots are a lot easier to walk around in. Once you're happy with your ski boots, then you can take one of them to the ski counter and they'll use your boot to fit your skis to the boots. Snowboards are just the next station along. Once you've got all of your gear on, you will need somewhere to put things like your street shoes, handbags and other things that you can't carry with you. So head to the locker room, which is on the other side of guest services. Lockers will cost you $18 a day and they'll fit quite a lot inside. There are also lockers for things like skis and snowboards if you're staying overnight and you don't particularly want to take them back to the lodge with you. And now finally you're ready to hit the slopes. It's simply a matter of just walking out of the Perisher Centre and up to the slopes. Many of the private ski lessons or the organised group ski lessons are just a few steps away from the Perisher Centre. Private lessons are available for kids from three years old up to adults. Adult group lessons are for ages 15 years and over, and they run for two hours. There are four different skill levels to choose from. First timer is the one to choose if you've never skied or snowboarded before. Then there's beginner, intermediate, and advanced. Kids group lessons run for three hours and are available for children aged three years to 14 years. No nappies are allowed, so little ones do need to be toilet trained. And aftercare is available for the little kids too. The Perisher Kids programs are also a lot of fun, where the kids do different weekly activities. Your very first ski lift is as easy as can be. This is called a magic carpet and it's made out of rubber. You just step on it and it conveys you up the gentle slope. Then you just step off the end. Like any other lift at Perisher, you do need a lift ticket to use a magic carpet. When you've had a little bit more experience on your skis, you may find that you try a T-bar next, which pulls you up the slope. It's important to mention that you don't sit on a T-bar. It's the tension behind your legs that pulls you and you stay quite stiff. To get off the T-bar at the end, you just pull back on the plastic covered cable until the pressure is off your legs. Then you twist the bar until it's vertical and free of your body and then just let it go. This is the Village 8 Express chairlift and it's also geared for beginners. It's super easy to use. You step onto a magic carpet and that takes you to exactly the right spot for then the chairlift to come around, you sit down and off you go. I have done a video of the whole Village 8 chairlift ride and I'll pop the link into the video description for you. When you get off at the top, you have the whole of Front Valley below you. You can see down to the Perisher Centre. It's a pretty gentle slope all the way down, so it's a great place to learn how to ski. 
This video is my girls learning how to ski on Front Valley in 2019. There are some important safety rules to remember when you're skiing, including give way to those below you and beside you, be sure to slow down in signposted slow areas, and don't stop in the middle of a trail, as you do risk someone running into you. Be sure to read through the Alpine Responsibility Code before you head up onto the slopes, so you can ski and ride with courtesy to others. The way that lift tickets work is pretty simple. You just pop the physical ticket into your pocket, normally in your sleeve, and as you approach the gates before you catch the lift to go up the mountain, the system recognises your ticket and then releases the gate, so you can just slide on through. When you've had a few lessons and you get more confident, you'll find that you want to go exploring. And the way that you know where you can go as a beginner is a simple colour-coded system of signage. Green are the beginner runs, the easy runs, the ones that aren't too steep and the ones that you can handle when you're first learning how to ski. I've done separate videos of all of these beautiful beginner runs and you'll find the links in the video description. There are lots of beautiful green trails in many areas of Perisher. One thing to look out for though is if you see a yellow sign like this, don't go that way. It means that there aren't any green runs there. Blue is intermediate. When you're a bit more confident, you can manage to turn well and you can basically cope with steeper grades. Black or black diamond runs are the hardest of all. They can be very steep and they do require a much higher skill level. Another really fun thing to do at Perisher is night skiing. And because it's held on Front Valley, it is suitable for beginners. It will cost you extra, but kids are free, and I do recommend that you rug up. It can get really cold. A night skiing pass in 2021 was approximately $40, but if you had an epic pass, it was free. On clear nights, there's even a fireworks show. When you're ready for a break or something to eat, head into the Perisher Centre. There's a lot of food choices here. This is 2021, so there's COVID-19 social distancing, which means you need to check in and wear a mask inside. Here you'll find a bar and all sorts of food outlets with buffets, takeaways, bakeries, you name it, 
The parish assent has got it. There's also some great retail shops here as well. Here's a little money saving tip for you. Things can get really expensive on the snow, as you might expect. Particularly if you've got a few kids and they all want a drink. Sometimes it's $8 for just a simple bottle of drink. But at each of the food outlets, you'll find water. Free drinking water. You just need to keep your eye out for it. For an even higher view when you have lunch, why not head up the Perisher Express chairlift to the mid restaurant? You don't need to be able to ski to get there because you just get off the chairlift and walk in. The mid restaurant has a great hot food buffet and they make some really cute hot chocolates with marshmallow snowmen in them. There's a bar up there as well and even a little gift shop. This is a great place that you can visit without having to be an expert skier, but you can feel like one sat there. And there's a free water station up here as well. Another place you can visit without having to be an expert skier or even a skier at all is the Mount Blue Cow Terminal. There's a big restaurant on the top level and it has lots of yummy food and gorgeous views of Mount Blue Cow. There's the free water stations in the restaurant. If you don't have a ski tube ticket, don't worry. Travel between Mount Blue Cow and Perisher on the ski tube is absolutely free. I really hope my video has helped you plan your trip to Perisher. Get excited because you're going to have an absolute ball there. If you have any further questions, don't hesitate to ask in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. If you enjoyed this video, please do consider dropping us a like. We really appreciate it and it helps us to keep the videos coming. And don't forget to check out our other Perisher videos to see what it's like to ski all over the mountains. Thanks for watching.